Hello there, welcome to Proper DIY. I've got a lovely little project for you this week in the shape of a stall. Now this is a really easy project that any DIY or woodworker can tackle, all made out of one quarter sheet of ply, just with a jigsaw. Something really handy for the workshop or the kitchen, or when too many family come around at Christmas and you haven't got room for all of them. And with just a couple of screws removed, all packs up for the rest of the year and I'll show you how I make it. So a nice, easy half day project today, which I think any DIYer can tackle. Just for a change, I've stained my antique, which is a color that I don't normally use. If you're interested, there are plans on my Etsy store for this stall, including the all important layout, which shows you how to cut all of this quite nicely from a quarter sheet of ply. So let's go back just a couple of hours ago when I started marking this out. I picked up a sheet of ply from my local DIY store and had them cut it into four quarters, only one of which I'm using today. I start by transferring the cutting layout onto the ply, just using a tape measure, square and pencil. The round top of the stall I thought I'd mark out using my large woodwork compass, but even that wasn't big enough. So I moved on to using a piece of string in a loop around a central nail. This works fine once you've adjusted it, and there's many different ways of marking a circle, so feel free to take your pick. The exact size of this isn't really the important thing. The main thing is that the circle is uniform and you also meet back where you started. So that's all the marking out done that we need at the moment. And obviously at this point, it's a really good idea to double check all your dimensions and have a, a, an overview of it and just make sure that it looks okay before you make any cuts. But what's quite nice about this design, if you just come and have a look at this, is the circle that we cut out for the top of the stall is exactly the same size and shape as the two semicircles that are in the bottom legs of the stall. That means that there's no wastage between these two parts at all. And even some of the wastage that we do have around the perimeter, we've got uses for those as well. But what it does mean is that when we're making this cut with the jigsaw for the top, we haven't got a waste side. We've got good material on both sides. So we have to be a little bit careful with that cut to make sure that we've end up with something clean on both sides. Now, talking about using the jigsaw, a lot of the cuts on this are straight cuts and obviously if you've got a circular saw then that's probably a better tool to use but today we're going to do everything with this jigsaw now making a straight cut with a jigsaw you can obviously do by hand but it's more accurate if you run it down the side of a straight edge and it will follow a line straighter if you're running this base plate down the side of a straight edge. But obviously the straight edge, when we clamp that down to the workpiece, is gonna to have to be offset from the line. So we need to understand the distance between where we clamp the straight edge and where we're cutting. And there's a couple of different ways of doing that. The obvious way is to put a blade in your jigsaw and then just measure between the side of your base plate and the side of the blade, and then you know the measurement. But the more accurate way, and I think slightly easier, I'll show you now. I've used this technique before with the circular saw and it works in exactly the same way with a jigsaw. Set up a piece of scrap wood and a straight edge and cut a short section. Then all you need to do is measure between the cut and the straight edge and you can actually measure the offset quite accurately. Another way of making life easy rather than using any measuring is to cut a short length of off cut that's butted up against a straight edge.
With this cut off on the mitre saw, we now have a block exactly the same width as the distance between the base plate and the blade. And we can use this to set up our straight edge for the straight cuts. But before doing these straight cuts, I start with the circular cut for the seat. And to do this, I first drill a starter hole in the leg section that will be cut away in the future so I can get the jigsaw blade in and get it started. During this circular cut, I go slow and any adjustments I make to it, I try to do as smoothly as possible to make sure that it's round with no steps or bumps along the way. To carry out the straight cuts, I choose a piece of timber that's got a good straight edge. This one has got a good and a not so good straight edge, so I firstly mark the one that I want to use so I don't get mixed up later. This is where the block that I've just made comes in really handy, as I don't even need to measure the offset. I just use the block as a spacer between the straight edge and the cut line. With it correct all the way along, I clamp everything down and make the cut. For the first cut like this, I stop after a short distance just to double check I'm cutting where I want to be. And with this method, if you're careful, you can actually get quite a respectable straight cut. I then get on and make all the other cuts. After all that cutting, I've ended up with three pieces of ply. I've got the circular section, which is obviously the top of the stool that you sit on, and then two identical pieces, which make up the body of the stool. Although when I put them on here and just feel down the side, they're not quite identical. I think they're probably within one, one and a half millimetres of each other, which is not surprising because a jigsaw is not the best saw in the world to get a nice straight line and follow in a pencil line, really. But because these are going to be at right angles to each other, I don't think anyone's going to notice. The main thing is that they're at the same height. And when I feel it on here, they are within the same height. If they're not at the same height at this stage, then you're going to have a stall that's going to be on the wonk, which isn't really funny. Well, it's funny, but not if you're trying to show off your woodworking skills. So the next thing I need to do is these are going to fit over each other. They're going to intersect each other. So I need to cut a slot, the width of the ply at the bottom of this one and the width of the ply at the top of this one. So they link together. Now, rather than trying to measure the width of that slot, it's going to be more accurate and easier to use an off cut, and just line it up, mark either side and then cut it to see if we can get a really tight fit. Marking these two intersecting cuts out, I first make sure that I'm marking one at the top and one at the bottom. To cut the same on both pieces is easily done and would be a total disaster.
I'm careful here to be cutting on the inside of each line so I make it fit nice and tight. I also leave the end of the cut short so I can adjust it bit by bit for a good fit. When I put the two together, as expected, I didn't cut the slot long enough, so I take away a few more millimetres. I've decided to use my new table mounted router just to round over the edges on this stall, but you can use a plane or sandpaper, you just need to get rid of any sharp corners. We all know that sanding is not people's favourite job. And watching it on video is probably not particularly good video either. So while I carry on with this, I have to tell you that this video is being sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need. So go and see my other self that will tell you all about the current sale. And maybe there'll be a decent sander there. If you see one, let us know. This is the last weekend of the biggest ITS sale to date, with savings across all categories and makes, such as power tools, hand tools, workwear, and even external stain and paint, just right for that fence that needs a spruce up for summer. This time, I'm particularly interested in their garden and outdoor offerings, now that the summer is coming, and with everything from lawnmowers to barbecues and gazebos, they seem to have all bases covered. As usual, if you order before 7 p.m., they guarantee next day delivery. And also, if it's your first time ordering and you spend more than 60 pounds, put in my code PROPERDIY, it took me ages to come up with that one, and they'll send you this free goodie bag, free. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Anyway, I think I've finished sanding, or just had enough of it, one or the other. So, let's get this stall put together. With the legs centred on the seat, I use four pieces of 100mm by 50mm offcuts to act as guides between the two. I simply glue them to the underside of the seat and unless you're really careful here with the glue it's probably best to remove the legs while the glue sets so there's no chance of the legs getting glued in place permanently at this stage. Not unless you want them to of course. I mark a suitable position for the fixing through the top of the leg into the adjacent block and then drill and countersink each one.
with four screws in place. The seat is now secured to the legs, but can always be broken down for storage in the future. You don't need to apply any finish, but there's nothing stopping you painting this or staining the stall like I am. Here I'm using a water-based stain that dries quite quickly and is easy to clean up. I've ended up with something that's cheap, practical, and is something that's gonna come in useful in the future. So after all of that, I think I deserve a sit down. And this is the ultimate test, because if it takes my weight, I can guarantee it will take everyone else's. Don't forget, if you're interested in making this, the plans are on my Etsy store. I'll put a link in the description below. And it's really handy to have this layout and all the setting out of cutting it from one quarter sheet of ply. That's really handy to have for this project. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please go and check out the other ones on the channel and please go and visit our Patreon site as well. The membership is growing and everyone is appreciating the extra content and the weekly competition over this. It's becoming a bit of a tradition now. So until next time, I think I'm just gonna sit here actually.